Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today we're going to talk about DOD's stand-down memo, what it means, whether it's going to be effective, whether it's really as important as the media is making it out to be, what it would take to actually be effective, and so on and so forth. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, the Department of Defense released a memo, and that memo basically says that the entire military at some point soon is going to stand down and the superiors are going to go to people and say hey just a reminder your oath is to the Constitution not any individual person like let's say a president and here's a method of reporting any activity that may be suspicious and may lead to events similar to what occurred on the 6th. Is this going to be super effective? No, no. But it's not designed to be. This is a symbolic move to let everybody in the military know they're going to take this seriously. There's going to be a lot of follow-on to this. The media is leaning into one statistic as the reason why the military really needs to take it seriously and really needs to do something about it right now, and it's super important. And that statistic is that one out of five of the people who participated in the Capitol, um, well, they have some kind of tie to the military. They have some form of veteran status. When you say it like that, one out of five, that sounds like a lot. I would point out that the overwhelming majority of people who participated in the events at the Capitol were men. What, what percentage of men in the United States have veteran status? About one in five. It doesn't appear that that was a deciding factor. Now, I would suggest that veteran status should lower your chances of being involved in something like this. But in and of itself, that statistic doesn't mean much. And I don't think that's what's motivating DOD's decision. I think they know that historically, when movements like this exist, when they form, when they attract members who uh, are prior service, those people tend to end up in positions of leadership. And if they have real training, they can act as real force multipliers. I think that's why DOD's doing it. And that's why they should do it. That's why they should take it seriously. Um, now, what would it take to really be effective at this? What would it take to get rid of the people who are susceptible to these kinds of movements? It gets to the heart of a debate that has existed in military circles since the beginning of militaries. What do we want our soldiers to be? And there are two schools of thought. And they can be represented by two different people. One could be represented by Colin Powell. Colin Powell wanted people who were bilingual critical thinkers. He didn't want to give a waiver for anything. He wanted the best and brightest. The other side of the spectrum could be summed up as McNamara, who was basically of the opinion that, well, anybody can work an M16. They don't have to be that smart. I would point out that McNamara's pilot program became known as McNamara's morons. Colin Powell's vision is what we tend to associate with our most elite forces. So, how do they do this? How do they get the PhDs who can win a bar fight? They have to recruit them the same way they do today for the, uh, the elite forces. What's the easiest way to go about this? What's the easiest way to get that recruitment pool of people who can critically think and who have uh, seen a little bit more than just a public school? increase access to education. You can learn critical thinking in a public school. You can learn critical thinking having never gone to school. However, 
the more you are exposed to the world, the more you are exposed to different ideas, the more likely you are to critically think. Increasing access to education would uh, provide the military with better recruits. The problem is, is that it is also one of their biggest recruitment tools. You've seen it in the commercials. Because we don't have a lot of access to education in this country, they use that. We'll pay for your college education. So they end up with recruits who, in many cases, have never left their hometown. If you want those bilingual critical thinkers, those people who have been around, you have to provide society as a whole the ability to see more, to do more, to visit more places, to learn more things. And then you'll have it in your recruitment pool. Um, that's probably not going to be the way DOD goes about it. They're probably just going to uh, more intensively investigate social media and stuff like that of people in the military. Uh, they'll, they'll probably look for a short-term fix rather than a societal one. But at the end of the day, the military is taking it seriously. They're doing it, I think, for the right reasons, not because of the statistic that keeps getting cited, and it's going to be a long, drawn-out process. But that's what's going on. And I would point out that the stand-down does not mean the entire military will be standing down at one time, uh, which was a question I got. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.